In the next few videos, we're going to go over transcription. This video is going to talk about the different types of RNA and the mechanism of transcription. Now, as you recall from the central dogma, transcription is the conversion of DNA into RNA. There are several types of RNA that can be transcribed from DNA, and that includes messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, and catalytic RNA. So first of all, a messenger RNA is denoted by mRNA, and this is the RNA we usually think of with the central dogma, since mRNA is what gets translated into proteins. So we see that messenger RNA codes for proteins. Transfer RNA, or tRNAs, these are RNA molecules that have an anticodon, a sequence that is complementary to codons in the mRNA. The transfer RNA also has a site where an amino acid can be bound. So essentially the role of the tRNA is to carry amino acids to the ribosome mRNA complex during translation. Ribosomal RNA, denoted by rRNA, is one of the components of ribosomes. Ribosomes are made from both RNA and proteins. Finally, catalytic RNA are also called ribozymes. And by catalytic, it means that it's an, a catalyst. And since RNA contains carbon, these are biological enzymes. And usually, when you think of enzymes, you're thinking of proteins. But it is important to note that enzymes can also be made from RNA. So ribozymes are RNA molecules that are enzymes. And they're involved with a variety of different biological reactions in the cell. All right, so these are the different types of RNA that can be transcribed. Let's now talk about how transcription occurs. So one of the main differences between transcription and DNA replication is that DNA replication involves many enzymes. Transcription is simpler in that there's really one main enzyme, RNA polymerase, that does everything. So RNA polymerase will start by binding to the promoter. The promoter is a specific sequence on the DNA that you can think of as the transcription start site. So if you want to express a particular gene, if you want to transcribe DNA into RNA, you need the RNA polymerase to first bind to the promoter. The next step is once RNA polymerase binds, well, in order to use DNA as a template to create RNA, it needs to be able to unwind the DNA. And that's exactly what RNA polymerase does. So that means RNA polymerase, in addition to being a polymerase, also has helicase activity. It's able to unwind DNA. Now, once the DNA is unwound, then there's going to be two strands that have been separated. Usually we just call them single-stranded DNA, but here with transcription, it's important to note that one of these strands is called the template strand, and one of these strands is called the coding strand. RNA polymerase binds to the template strand, and using the template strand, it's going to create a complementary RNA sequence. And you can see how that works in this diagram. So again, there's a template strand and there is a coding strand. The RNA polymerase enzyme binds to the template strand to create the RNA molecule. Now, on the MCAT, they often like to ask questions about this. So what you want to keep in mind, and usually this is for mRNA, since mRNAs will code for proteins, you want to remember that the mRNA is complementary to the template strand, and mRNA has the same sequence as the coding strand. And that's because if RNA polymerase is making a fragment of RNA that is complementary to the template strand, well, the coding strand is also complementary to the template strand. So that's why mRNA has the same sequence as the coding strand. The one exception, of course, is the fact that DNA has thymine and RNA has uracil. But aside from that, they have the same sequence. Another important thing to note is that RNA polymerase is a DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. It uses DNA as a template to produce RNA. And this process is essentially just going to occur producing the RNA molecule until the RNA polymerase reaches a transcription stop site, and then it stops. So here's also another distinction between transcription and DNA replication. 
in DNA replication, you're going to go ahead and replicate the entire chromosome. But in transcription, that's not the case. You're only going to transcribe a portion of the chromosome. And usually it's pretty small compared to the entire chromosome. And one last thing that's also important to note, unlike DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase does not have proofreading activity, which means when RNA polymerase is adding nucleotides to synthesize the RNA molecule, sometimes it will make mistakes. And because it makes mistakes, we say that RNA polymerase is error prone. And if it makes mistakes, that means the translated protein may not be functional. And you might wonder, you know, why doesn't RNA polymerase have proofreading function? Well, this is just biology, all right? So we often aren't, you know, making the rules for how biology works. This is often just, it's usually just, this is biology and we try to explain it. So one way to try to explain why RNA polymerase does not have proofreading ability is the fact that RNA is not as stable as DNA, all right? While DNA has to, stay, essentially stick around for the entire duration of the organism's lifespan, RNA is going to be degraded fairly quickly. So that means whatever RNA is produced from DNA, it's going to be degraded. So if you make one molecule with an error, it's not that big of a deal because it's going to get degraded, and then you can just make another molecule of RNA without that same mutation. All right, so that's how transcription works.